Today we are blessed to present one of these insightful lectures entitled The Life of Lord Mahavira Always Concentrate Inside Part 4 of 5 on Between Master and Disciples Given in Chinese and English on July 7, 2019 at the New Land Ashram, Taiwan also known as Formosa. So now, uh, in India, they build such a, a temporary house for people when they went on pilgrimage to take a rest. Né? Some people do take care of that kind of house and they provide blanket, provide a coal to make fire, yeah, for people who pay for it. I did not have, so I just stand behind the group, you know, <laughs> and uh, I have a, a staff. I pick a wooden brand somewhere outside and I use it to walk because it's very good for you to use it to walk on a muddy road or a very, very uh, broken road or climbing high mountain or going down when it's slippery in the rain. The staff is really like your third leg. It stabilizes you. If you don't have an umbrella, you use the staff or you use an umbrella. Whatever it is, you must have it if you walk in the Himalaya region, okay? That's why you see many monks, they also have a staff like that. It's also a necessity. It's, it's a necessity. It's not like an obligation or it's not uh, listed in a precept or anything. It just, uh, you need it, okay? Yeah. Or maybe sometime if you encounter a snake or something, you gently use it to uh, shift him, you know, to <laughs> inside the bush or something and let him go. Huh? Mm. Gently, huh? Because he's fast also. Mm. And, oh, I forgot, okay. I, I mentioned these rooms, you know, these temporary uh, housing for the pilgrim because you're not allowed to stay anywhere more than three days. And further on, you go to the Rishikesh, the top region where many uh, temples and ashrams were built. You know, the Beatles, they went there also, they went there to one of the ashram of the Maharishi, you know, the one who can levitate. So that's their master, yeah? They went there. I wonder how such a group of youngsters would venture into Himalaya in the Rishikesh region. I guess they had some yearning. They probably heard famous yogi story and wanted to practice meditation or something, learn some spiritual uh, knowledge or something, so they went there. Because many yogis were there, many masters were there. Uh, some of the master of the great uh, Beas uh, lineage went there, like uh, Master Kirpa Singh, one of the disciples of Master Baba Savan Singh, is Kirpa Singh. He went there to do retreat for some time before he came out uh, to be a master in uh, one of the Indian branches uh, of uh, Inner Light and Sound method. Shabda, they call that in uh, Sanskrit, in Sikhism. Shabda means sound, heavenly sound. And they call the, the light, the knowledge of the Lord, Nam, in the true knowledge true name, yeah. That's why we have this uh, Sakhan region where Nam came from, where the Shabda also emerged, okay? That's what they said, that's what they thought, that's what they believed. And so if you rely on this Nam and this Shabda, you will go back to that original region. That's why, huh? Right, sister? Wow! You are really a good supporter, aren't you? Anything I ask is right, right. Are you sure it's true or it's just the Indian style? Whatever. <laughs> huh? It's absolutely correct, Master. It's true, yeah? Because in India, if you ask the direction, just go straight ahead. <laughs> just straight ahead. <laughs> and even they say, they say no, it, it's like this. Yes, this is yes. Okay, so be careful. When you go there, don't misread the signal and make trouble for yourself. But the Indian people, they are very kind, very gentle, 
generous, very charitable in their heart. Too good, they're too good. Too, too, too generous, too kind, too trusting. They're very trusting nature. They trust that anybody, stranger, came to their house is a blessing, is a god uh, who came to their house. So they have to treat them like a god. Even they have the last morsel of chapati, they must offer it to you with love and respect before you can go there and stay a long time. Yeah, but now maybe three months. <laughs> when I last went to India, it was three months only as British. How about now? Master, if you come, then we'll surely welcome you. For, you can stay for as long as. I don't think they'll object. Because uh, any spiritual master, like, and especially you're well known, so they don't say no to. Oh, really? Yes, Master. Oh, maybe I'll be coming. Yeah. Great. I was nobody, so I got a three month stamp. Before that, you know, the, the time before I came, I could stay long, long. After that, there's different restriction. I guess it's to protect the innocent, pure-hearted Indian people. I also approve. I also think it's a good decision, yes, because many Indian people, they are not rich, yeah, as everywhere, as everywhere. It just may be more obvious in India, because the Indian people, they're more inside, you know? They do not care much about, it's okay, I continue with my calendar. It's nothing spiritual, I just want to explain something more to you in case you want to seek enlightenment in India, then you must know how to behave, okay? You don't just go into any house and eat anything they offer without returning something, without giving some money, because maybe they give you a banquet like, but they have nothing else to eat later on, because they're just too pure. To trusting. Trusting is good, but sometimes it really surprises you. In my case, sometimes I trust too much and I surprise all the time. I still am surprised nowadays. Not just before, but now. I trust people a lot. I trust anybody. Yeah. And if you go to the Himalaya, deeper region, you know, I mean, even past Rishikesh, somewhere in India, do not think that your credit card will work. Do not think that you have a lot of money, then you'll be safe and fed. No. Because the region where I went, I'm not sure many other regions, but the, the regions where I went, you have money, you pay for sure, okay, but there's no houses there. Maybe long, long, many, many, ten kilometers, then you have a little hut eh, with a roof on it, nothing else, <laughs> and the four the four poles, the four corners to sustain the roof. Or maybe not, maybe just a plastic sheet on top. And a, a box, a box about this side and this high, uh, full of flour inside, if it's full. And you know, in the pilgrim season, there are wow, a lot, a lot of them, thousands of them, ten thousands. So even you have money, you can go hungry for days. So make sure you study some wild plant, edible, huh? <laughs> wild edible fruits, okay? And, uh, you know, feed yourself meanwhile. You know, go out and graze, <laughs> because except grazing, <laughs> you could stay hungry. Or drink Gan Ganges River. But the Ganges River is not always flat near you or easy to reach. It's so deep. You know, may sometimes tens or more than hundreds meters deep under there. And you right on top of there. No way you can do anything. But if you go around May, April, May, no, I think May, huh? before that, there's still too much snow and the, the army did not cut through the icy glacier yet. So you cannot go up. You can go. When everybody go, you go. Don't, don't go alone earlier or later alone. It's dangerous, huh? Mm. You could meet wild, wild animal or, you know, some other uh, bad elements, maybe bad for you. That's why the pilgrims, they never go alone. They go in group. I was the only one that go alone. <laughs> but of course, I catch up with the group and go with them. But later, I also go alone. But these are... Uh, pilgrim season, 
and daytime, okay? And it's always another group somewhere coming, you see, catching up with me, uh, or other group coming back, so it's, it's not like all very lonesome road. If you can call that road is a path, sometime this big, you can put only one foot at a time. Two feet no good, huh? you might fall down. Slippery, and the stone are loose, very, very loose. Be very careful every step you go. Many, many people went there, never came back. It's not a joke, it's not to frighten you. You ask any Indian people, many Indian people don't dare go to Himalaya. Is right, sister? Normal people don't go to Himalayas because it is very difficult trek. Yeah. And they don't return. It's dangerous, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Himalaya, go hunja so kashil tenon, bonga ko de jogin oton jalbakamina, to kanjaramina, bonga iso circo katunde. Maggie short. Yeah. Uh, the way Master went to the Himalaya, there is a um, reason why. Oh, she asked why I went to Himalaya? Yes. She still doesn't know? Huh? A tourist, okay? <laughs> looking for Buddha. Mm. Yeah. Some people go looking for cities or famous uh, uh, places. I go looking for the Buddha. I'm a Buddhist tourist. <laughs> Yeah, looking for God. Yeah, she, uh, she guessed uh, the, uh, that time when Master going to Himalaya, there is a reason why they are eager to find the God um, to oh. be compared to her experience. To her experience, she also went to Himalaya? No, 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 no. but she has a, a big eager to find the God. Oh, oh, that's why she didn't go to Himalaya. Ah, oh, I got it. Compare. <laughs> one like to, eager to find God, went to Himalaya, one eager to find God, didn't go to Himalaya, still find God. You lucky. You lucky. Huh? Translate it wrong. Oh, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you understand Korean? <laughs> you translate to her? Yes. Yeah, but did you understand her Korean? Yes. Yes? Oh man, okay, never mind, whatever. I will know it when it go on the SMTV screen. <laughs> <laughs> ah, don't worry, okay? We all understand inside and that's important. Huh? No need language too much. Otherwise, there are thousands of languages in the world. We never had enough time to learn, even from the time we, we're still drinking milk <laughs> until the time we die. We never had time to learn all that. So, Kwan Ying, language is the best, eh? Yeah. That's why we can sit together, you know, from all different personality or nationality here and still feel oneness, yeah? Still feel good together, huh? I mean, generally, yeah. In the deeper Himalaya uh, Rishikesh area, that's a famous place for uh, pilgrim also, yeah? It's more officially famous <laughs> on the map. <laughs> many yogis went there, many masters went there to meditate in the old time until now, okay? So people believe that it is a very auspicious spiritual region, okay? I feel very happy there, yes. Very, very happy. I guess I would feel happy anywhere because I had nobody else <laughs> to be sad, to, to share their karma or to have to worry or to have to listen to their nonsense. Yeah? Then I would never be sad there. That's the happiest time of my life. I had not much money. I ate only one or two or three chapatis per day. And if uh, I was generous, if any day I was generous to myself, I can have another pa uh, pakora, right? Oh, no, not pakora, the triangle one, samosa. Mm. They make it so small. Wow. About my wrist, a little bit smaller, the triangle. You know, in India, a restaurant here, they make it bigger, huh? Most of them make very big, but in India, no. In my area, no. And you know, I can't afford second one. 
one time only, but this tastes even better, you know, like heaven. I never ate any samosa it tastes as good as that time when I was in Rishikesh. You know why? Huh? Secret. Why? <laughs> Hungry? <laughs> How did you guess? <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Not hungry, just didn't have enough food, didn't have enough money to afford more luxurious style. Mm. Just as every other yogi, Master Mahavira left and went to another village. village. It's also good like that because uh, otherwise he keeps staying there and eating from the same people all the time. Maybe they couldn't afford to keep feeding him, huh? huh? Also to, to show more affinity with different people. Hmm? That's a tradition of monk. Whether or not this monk or any monk is aware of his own blessing power or not. Okay? Tradition of the monk, they should uh, go for alms from different houses all the time. Hmm? Uh, that's why Ananda had problem, because he had to go to a different house that day, and he cannot avoid going to that artisan house, you know, through that artisan house, and get caught. <laughs> But that is their destiny, so that the girl, the artisan girl, can also become a heart because of her love for Ananda. She follow him, and instead of catching him, the Buddha caught her <laughs> and never released her. Then she became nun and became a heart. Even before Ananda, oh, shame on him, huh? <laughs> yeah. But it's not because Ananda was maybe too low level or too slow or too bad or anything that he became enlightened so slow. It's just his destiny like that, his vow like that. He has to serve the Buddha until the Buddha Nirvana. Then he can become all-knowing, all-enlightened. Because if he was too enlightened before, then his intellectual power would be less. Enlightenment is a higher level of consciousness, intellect. It's just a common element of the mind, of the brain, so that you can learn things in the world. Okay? It doesn't help you to be enlightened. But it could, it could, if you use the intellect to understand the teaching of the Master, then you will have no doubt. You will be more diligent in your spiritual practice and also be enlightened uh, easier. And that's also possible like that, yes. But intellect alone will not give you enlightenment. No matter how much knowledge you amass in this world, it helps you nothing. It just crowded your brain more and make you more confused and more maybe arrogant and more uh, ignorant in spiritual matter, I mean, in the spiritual domain. Sometimes the more intellectually you develop, the less easy to get enlightenment. Because you're so full of uh, argumentative uh, info inside, you know? And you're thinking too much of all the things that you accumulated and then you don't have a chance all the time the space to think of a higher dimension. Is it clear or not? Yeah? Mm, calendar is clear, right.